Hey everyone, today I'm going to give you some advice on transfer strategies, how to spend your money and how to prepare your team for matches with formations and choices of substitutes. So let's get straight into it. My first advice here is on the subject of transfer strategies. Your options here very much depend on how long you choose to spend with the club that you're at. If you intend to stay at the club for a long time, for example if you're doing a team rebuild like I've done many times, I would recommend focusing on purchasing youngsters, specifically wonder kids if you can. Wonder kids are usually teenage players with very high potential, usually being able to reach like over 90 rating, some like most of the time like 98, 99 rating after quite quite a few seasons it is quite a long term investment, which is why I say if you're staying at the club for a long time. Um, but if you can spot them early on, you can get them really cheap and easily build a really good team. However, the list of Wonder Kids does change with each large update within the game. That was a problem I had. I used to have a list of every Wonder Kid in the game, um, but then the game was updated, and I think only two of them were the same. So be wary that it may change. So if you start a new career, it may not be the same Wonder Kids as a previous career that you've done. Uh, it all depends on when you started your career. The only consistent Wonder Kid that I'm aware of currently is Zareto. Um, with the, he has a little accent on it. Um, he is a striker and pretty good potential from what I remember. Though Again, it has been a while. I think there was another consistent one, but I'm not 100% on who it was. But your best bet is to just look online. See if anybody has published anything to say, like on Reddit or anything, um, what the current Wonder Kids are. Or even if you look in the comments of this video and probably a ton of my other old videos. I know people recommend signings all the time, and most of the time I don't listen, to be honest, but there's a lot of recommendations stuff, so if you're ever looking for Wonder Kids, look online, you'll probably find some stuff. But you may also just come across them by luck. I know I've done that before, where I've just found a Wonder Kid by pure luck. So just play around, and when you're making transfers, you might just find some. Because generally, aiming for younger players can just help you get players with a good potential to help your team grow in the future. Because you can get them cheap early on and then keep them with your team and build them up. Even if you don't get a great potential from them, you can still sell them for a profit in a later season to improve your team later on by purchasing a better player. So generally, just a pretty good idea to get some younger players in. If you're only going to be at a club for a few seasons, then I would recommend trying to purchase a player who is quite old and cheap, but still has a really high rating. So you can have a good couple of seasons with a very high rated player before they retire. Usually, if you get like a, maybe a 40 year old player, something like that, maybe a bit younger, um, could be very high rated, but only being sold for like a couple hundred K just because they're that old and they're only going to have a season or two left in them. Loans it will open up your options a lot more. They're a newer addition to the game. And that will, again, just widen your options, I mean you can just get a really high rated player for just a couple of seasons to give you that boost with that team, which may help you get to a better team in future. But I don't know too much about loans, but that's something you can experiment with and definitely get a lot more high rated players just as a temporary thing. So how should you utilise your money? First of all, your main source of income is going to be player sales, as money from winning the leagues is not a large source of income at all. Barely worth it, to be honest, in my opinion at least. Like, you're only getting so much every season, and the amount you're getting is not loads. It can help, but it's nothing like life-changing. You can't buy an entire new player with that most of the time. Um, so every time you sell a player, unless you want to have less of a certain position you should really just be buying a replacement so you sell a center back you buy a center pla center back um, and you want to purchase the replacement for a cheaper cost probably younger maybe a higher rating if you can than the amount that you're selling the player for so the amount you're selling is higher than the amount of money you're buying you make profit on the sale and then overall you have more money to spend elsewhere you may want to invest this in the future, just purchasing a wonder kid or a more expensive player who's going to give your team a lot higher of a rating. However, I would recommend investing in your training academy. This allows players to reach a higher potential and to just do it much faster, making your wonder kids and youngsters much more effective. Uh, once the training academy becomes quite expensive and you feel the other options such as the scout and the youth, youth academy then appear relatively cheap, you could get like you could be upgrading the training academy and then all of a sudden the training academy 
is like a million to upgrade. I think it's like two million is the big jump. Um, but then your youth academy still only cost like a, like 10,000 to upgrade. So, you know, there's a relative, which one's cheaper? You can then invest in some of the other stuff. Personally, I invest in the youth academy because I just don't have much experience using scouts. But it's your choice. I'll leave that choice to you. Because the youth academy can be really good for getting you like a new player. Because um, every season, if you've got space on the team, you can get some new players in, which you could just get a wonder kid from that. I think that has happened to me once before. And that can be really good. You get cheap you wonder kid straight for free or just a youngster that you can sell off for high later on um and that is really good but also the scouts are really good to just spot potential and you see which players are going to be good in the future and that's something that can definitely help you out when preparing your team you have to think about the kind of chances that you're going to be getting in matches I always recommend a 4-3-3 formation as having three attackers allows you to have a player on each wing and then one in the centre to pass to when you're having your attacking chances. Four in defence means that you usually outnumber the opponents defensively as not many teams have four attackers and certainly none of them have more than four attackers. So you'll always either be equal or outnumbering the attackers. You could also do a 5-2-3 formation to outnumber your opponents even more when defending. Um, to make sure, you, which means you can just commit to slide tackles left and right while still having defenders in the way of the goal, and that's pretty cool. But it also means that you don't have as many midfielders to back you up in an attacking scenario. When you're attacking, sometimes you want a player that's a bit further back that you can pass to um, just to try and get the ball out of an area and try again from a different angle, and you may not have that as much by doing a 5-2-3. Um, but the same goes when you're in a 4-3-3, your defence might be backed up by midfielders, you know. There's benefits and deficits to each one. Personally, I would recommend one of these two formations, but you can pick your own formation. There are going to be plenty of formations that you're comfortable with, you've played with a lot, and you're more familiar with, and you may have a completely different idea to me as to how you want your attacking and defensive chances to go. So you can choose your own formation. That is something that is based on how you feel playing the game and how you like to play the game. But if you're new to the game and you're looking for certain traditional formations that will help you out, 4-3-3 is like, it's your basic, your basic, basic formation, but it works. 5-2-3 is a bit more out there, but I feel like for the purpose of World Soccer Champs specifically, I think it can work pretty well. Mentality in the bottom left affects how offensive you'll play, affecting the balance of attacking and defensive chances you'll get. Mainly, you want to play defensive against the teams higher rated than you, neutral to those similarly rated to you, and offensive to teams rated lower than you. You can see your teams and your opponent's teams ratings on the main menu in the next match box and the team management box, respectively. The pressure selection over to the right, um, still on the bottom row, uh, affects how many attacking chances you'll get, but increasing it will rapidly decrease your player's energy and vice versa. You'll have to make your own judgment on this based on what substitutes you have available and if you think you'll need them in the coming match. Remember that you can change the pressure mid-match to try and change the game's momentum. When preparing your teams, obviously you want to have your highest rated players in your team for your most important games. However, for friendlies and such, you can use worse players to give your main team a break to recover energy, as it's unlikely that your team will be able to consistently play every match. Unless you're in like a pretty low league and you've not even got like a national cup you're taking part in, your players are going to get a bit tired sometimes, which can definitely take away from them towards the end of the match. So remember to play around you with your team a bit, um, just to make sure that you're keeping everybody high energy, you know, leaving some people on the bench, which um, making substitutes in games, I don't do it very often, but it can definitely help. So I would recommend, you know, like 60 minutes is kind of like a rough make substitutes then. That's kind of what happens in real life football a lot of the time. And it works. It's the energy that they've gained from half time is kind of wearing out and that's when everybody's getting tired. So I'd say something like that if you want to make substitutions, you know, anybody who's in the red in their energy, you can definitely take off. But I don't think energy has a, such a massive effect. You can get away with not doing substitutes. I feel like it probably does have an effect, but personally, I've not, see, I've not seen it have a massive effect on matches. 
and I've not seen any like massive changes like a game's momentum has fully swinged because of certain substitutions you've made. It's not like football manager. It's not going to be the end or be all, I don't think. I don't know, maybe you've had different experiences, but personally, it's just never fully amounted to anything. But aim for that kind of 60-minute mark, maybe 70 minutes, if you are going to make substitutions. I think keeping players with a higher energy on the field as well does just help with avoiding injuries as well. Because if you have a ton of players on the pitch who are really low energy, you're probably increasing the risk of injuries and stuff there. Uh, make sure you're aware of which players have secondary positions. So you'll see in the little box um, when you've like clicked on a player, you can see their main position and then just smaller underneath a secondary position. So like a left back may have a secondary position of like a left wing. So be aware of those as those can really help you out. And also it could affect what your highest rated team is. You know, your left back playing as a left wing could be higher rated than your just plain left wing anyway. It's unlikely, but just keep an eye out for it because it does happen. On the bench, you should probably have at least one replacement for every position within your formation. One left wing, one right wing, one striker, one central midfielder and so on. On top of that, for positions you have multiple of, like centre-back in a 4-3-3 and a 5-3-3 scenario, uh, in most cases you could have, well, you want more than one of each of the centre-backs on the bench, but you may just not have space for it, so you may have to settle for less. So just try and make your choice. And that's, again, where you're trying to get as many, try and get as many players with multiple positions as you can. Any players who can play secondary positions mean you can get a lot more coverage on your bench. You can have a player who plays left back and centre back, and then that covers both of those positions on the bench, leaving you more space for certain positions that you feel you need more of. Yeah, even if they're slightly lower rated than some others, it can leave you a lot more prepared for injuries and red cards, that kind of thing that pop up in the middle of matches. It just leaves you a lot more prepared to fill spaces in the team when other players fall out. Speaking of which, these are two things that will very much affect your teams. You will need to adjust your substitutes and reserves accordingly around injuries and red cards and suspensions. Um, remember to bring your team back into its best form once they return from suspension or injury, because that's something I forget about all the time. Uh, I leave like, my best players on the reserve bench, which I should not be doing. Uh, be sure to pay attention to yellow cards. The game will show you in the team section, the team management uh, menu, when players are one yellow card away from suspension. Again, I don't really follow this advice myself, but if an important game is coming up, you should probably leave some of the players that are one yellow card away from suspension on the bench so that you don't get dozens of players getting suspended at once and unable to play for that important upcoming game. I've had it before when there have been like five players who are one yellow card away from suspension and then something goes wrong one match and then you've got three players that are suspended, and it's just, what do you do from there? So just keep an eye out for that, and make sure you're being responsible, and being aware that if something goes wrong here, I could lose a lot of players. Thanks for listening, everyone. Hopefully you learned a little something from this that you can take forward to win your matches, win your leagues, win your trophies, win everything. Um, I wish you the very best in future careers. So have a nice day. Goodbye, and as always, stay creative.